Hello and welcome back to Aviation Engineering. If this is your first visit to the channel, welcome to you too. Please do like, subscribe and share. So let us continue to today's video. In this video, we're going to have a small glimpse into the aircraft cockpit. Although most manufacturers have moved away from analog cockpits, most of the instruments are still the same, be it just in another format. Here, for example, you can see the big jump between the Boeing 737-400 and the 800. Almost all of the analog instruments have been replaced by six multifunction display screens. These are known as DUs, or display units. If any of these screens should fail, both the captain and the first officer can use these switches to cycle what is displayed on the remaining screens. Here's a look at the Boeing 747. And as you can see, it, it is almost the same. The two center displays are normally cycled between different functions, like landing gear, visualization, air conditioning, doors, and so on. Whatever is required by the crew. It is here in the Boeing 747-400 and the Boeing 737-800 that you begin the notice in the change of the switches. Gone are some of those toggle switches, and now they are being replaced by square, guarded, or non-guarded switches. This is Boeing slowly morphing into the 777 cockpit layout, thus giving the panel a fresh look. And now we move on to their final upgrade, the Boeing 787. This was a major upgrade. There was a ton of updates. So how does this compare to an Airbus cockpit? So here is a view of an A340-300 cockpit in comparison. The Airbus cockpit layout remains almost unchanged between the variants, thus meaning that the 319 320, 330, and 340 cockpits are virtually identical. Then things started to change for Airbus with the arrival of the new A350 aircraft. As you can see, their cockpit layout has also changed slightly. Just being Airbus lovers, it's obviously changed quite a bit. So at this point in the video, I think is where most of the Airbus guys are going to log off after that statement. Now that we have seen what these cockpits look like, Let's zoom in a little and see if we can see something interesting. In the center of the forward pedestal, there are two screens with keypads. These are known, in the case of the Boeing, as MCDUs. By using the line keys on the left and right, you can select what function you need to use. The MCDUs have various inputs to them, be it from the fuel system, from the flight management system, from the IRSs, and from the digital clock, all used with flight planning. There are various other inputs as well, but for this video, the crews use the FMS side, the flight management side of this, to do their flight planning. The ground engineers use the system report and test function of this, where they can do testing, such as by built-in test equipment, to interrogate various of the components inside the systems or subsystems to find and rectify snags that have happened during the previous leg of flight. The system also stores snags from previous legs that can be viewed or printed out. In some cases, a fault code will be stored, which the engineers can use by using the FIM, the Fault Isolation Manual, to rectify the problem. And by now, my comment section has probably exploded of the things that I didn't mention about the MCDU. Just discussing the MCDU should be another three-hour video. As you can see on top of the screen, on the right-hand side, it says ACARS, that is Aircraft Communications Addressing and Reporting System. Yet another system I haven't mentioned. This is a digital communication system used on the aircraft that allows messages to be sent and received between the aircraft and ground stations. They normally use the VHF-3 radio for this. So what's on the screen currently? It tells us the aircraft took off at 6 minutes past 9 and landed 6 minutes to 11. The total flying time is 1 hour 47 minutes. And the total time is 2 hours and 4 minutes. That's called the block time. It's from chocks off to chocks in. It also shows the estimated arrival time at the bottom as 40 minutes past 11, which means that the crew scored 20 minutes somewhere. This probably happened because it was a late night flight and the crew was allowed to deviate from the original plan. And also on the approach probably came in short instead of doing a long approach. This is common practice among airlines as time equals money. Every second counts in this business. Let's have a look at another example. In this case, it's a Boeing 737-400. On the left hand screen, you can see the GPS position. This is used with the IRS system. 
At the top of this display, it says Position Initiate. The next line shows the last known position. And in the following line, it says FACT. This is the international airport code for Cape Town International Airport. The next line down shows Alpha 16, which is the actual gate the aircraft is parked at, with the gate's GPS coordinates right next to it. The right hand screen is currently on the performance page. This is the flight management side of the system. This page is currently displaying the fuel management side. Here you can see the fuels displayed as 4 tons, with the gauges indicating 4,030. It is here where the crew can actually put in the altitude they're going to fly at, fill in the zero fuel weight, the weight of the aircraft, enter the wind speed at its direction, put in the reserve fuel. This is fuel they must have left over by law, so they can divert or do go-arounds to operate the aircraft safely. Did you notice the white piece of paper that is rolled up on the center console? Here's my question to you as viewers. Will any one of you be able to guess what is written on that piece of paper? Please put it down in the comments below and we can see who is the first person that answers correctly. I will give you a hint. It's got to do with the previous day's flying. This piece of paper also comes out of the printer on the center pedestal. As another hint, here we have a picture of the center console or pedestal of a Boeing 737-400. Pause this video and see if you can see something interesting. Test your skill. Have a look at the pilot's radio, the captain's side. Who is he listening to? Who is he talking to? Look at the co-pilot's side. Who is he listening to? Who is he talking to? Look at the door lock switch. Does it tell you something? The previous day's score code is still visible. Now let's look at the nav display. You can see that the captain's dialed in 115.7. The VOR for Cape Town Airport. The ILS is dialed in as 110.3 or decimal 3. Can you tell me which runway they landed on? I think that's enough acronyms and torture for one day. Here's a couple of pictures that you don't need a film for, or any sort of explanation from the MCDU. Just a point of interest, aircraft do use fleet red tires. This is what happens when it delaminates. The next picture is of a CFM engine which is fitted on the Boeing 737-400. This is when a bird tries to play chicken with an aeroplane and loses. This happened early morning out of Cape Town. The crew was lucky here. They were just starting their takeoff roll when they ingested the bird. So they had enough time to pull reverse thrust, stop and pull back into the bay. The next slide is of an hydraulic fuse which operates at about 3000 psi pressure. The fuse had broken completely through. It's in the wheel well and strangely enough there was hardly a drip coming from it. The captain mentioned that there was a tear or two running down the back wall of the wheel well, and on inspection I found that this thing had completely broken. Amazing. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Until next time.